Like that? Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, Andreas Jobst, uh, thanks for the introduction. I'm project manager at Camp to Camp, doing uh, all kinds of projects, but uh, quite a few in the uh, QGIS field and uh, also some uh, GeoMapfish projects for different customers. And uh, yeah, today I want to talk about the, the Chinese Postman problem in implementation. Um, that was done by my colleague uh, Ismail uh, Sunni. Uh, and before we start, uh, um, yeah, just a quick overview. Um, I also want to talk about the, the project, the larger project um, built around the Chinese Postman um, part. Um, we developed a, a routing plugin for the desktop GIS uh, CADAS. I want to talk about that as well, and uh, and then we'll we'll look at the, the Chinese postman problem. And uh, uh, to start, uh, yeah, uh, camp to camp. Just showing you the map there. I work from the from the Munich office. Uh, it's been almost uh, four years now, and uh, yeah, quite a few quite a few uh, geospatial colleagues uh, in in camp to camp. Over forty now, and. Uh, um, yeah, doing more and more projects uh, using open source technologies. And uh, this is still our uh, vision of the uh, open source world and uh, it also I think applies to most of geo projects uh, where we have different levels all the way from, from uh, standard uh, users to integrators all the way up to the PSC. And uh, yeah, we have uh, people in, in different layers in that, in that pyramid. All right, uh, the, the project was actually funded by Amaswiss. Um, the, the idea was to have uh, uh, an offline routing solution. So for the, the Swiss uh, military uh, students, uh, they, they would have the, the standard uh, laptop and uh, in, in case of no internet connection, they'd still be able to do all kinds of different uh, uh, routing uh, things. And uh, they already have a desktop GS, uh, CADAS. Uh, the link is there. And uh, to add some functionality, we worked on this uh, routing plugin. So one part is the well, the UI, the, the plugin built into CADAS, in, uh, uh, written in Python. CADAS itself is uh, based on QGIS. For those of you who don't know CADAS, it's a simplified version. And the, uh, the, the data we use, uh, OpenStreetMap data. And then there was the question which uh, routing engine to use. And I'll show you after. Uh, well, why we chose Valhalla, and uh, yeah, so it's it's uh, it doesn't have some uh, crazy uh, uh, cloud infrastructure because it's a simple offline solution. But yeah, we we have CADAS. Um, uh, the parameters go uh, uh, via command line to uh, the routing engine, and uh, we have uh, diff different databases. One for the, the Valhalla tiles, the Valhalla uh, graph tiles, which are pretty much uh, vector tiles, and we have all the, the CADAS data in a separate database. So why did we choose uh, Valhalla? Um, well, it's been tested to work well with open OpenStreetMap data, so we knew we were going to work with OpenStreetMap data for a start, so um, that was a, an argument uh, for it. Um, uh, the data model um, is quite efficient in terms of memory use, and uh, Valhalla is suited for offline routing. And uh, what we'll see is that the Chinese Postman problem uh, solution consists of, diff of different algorithms. And uh, one of them we could actually use without changing hardly anything, the time and distance matrix service uh, that is already part of Valhalla. 
So that was another reason why we chose it. And of course, because uh, it's a substantial part of this whole Chinese postman thing, um, we will benefit from bug fixes and extensions of this service in the future. So, yeah. Um, right. And Valhalla is used by quite a few integrators and users. I put up some examples here. Uh, besides uh, Arma Swiss, uh, I could also name uh, Mapillary, Mapbox, the small company that produces uh, electric cars, and uh, uh, Sidewalk Labs. And it's still under a regular uh, uh, MIT open source license. This is the, the, the sort of uh, menu uh, inside CADAS. Um, uh, apart from the Chinese Postman problem, we have different functionalities in there uh, in this routing plugin. So isochrones, iso distances, uh, standard route calculation, uh, uh, also for way, uh, several waypoints, uh, no-go areas. So if you don't want to pass a certain area, this can be defined. And uh, we also have uh, some basic navigation working already. And also, uh, a data portal uh, where you can download the OpenStreetMap data for your, for your domain. All right, so what, what is the Chinese Postman problem? It's really about, um, it's as simple as uh, uh, you draw an area and you want to cover every single road or, uh, in that network. Um, so it's bit different than the traveling salesman because uh, you really want to cover all all the lines and uh, uh, in this case uh, we also had to cover both uh, sides of the road so uh, we can't just say oh it's all uh, once we've gone through a certain road no it's it's not enough you need to cover both uh, sides and of course this uh, is under the uh, uh, efficiency uh, um, so the, the aim to, to make this in a, as, as short amount of time as possible. So, so far we haven't minimized the distance. Use cases. In this particular case, it was for, uh, in case of emergency, uh, patrolling mode, we, we decided to call it. But obviously there is uh, many applications of it. Uh, like... Uh, services by city councils and uh, or even street view recordings. The theory, uh, it's quite well explained at the university uh, uh, page of the uh, TU uh, in Munich. And this was uh, quite useful to, for my colleague to start working on the um, algorithm implementation. And uh, without going into too much detail, there is uh, a bunch of algorithms uh, the first one uh, looks at the, um, so you, you, you look at all the nodes in the network and then you, you make as many pairs as you can create and then um, it, it, for each pair it calculates the shortest path. Then it finds the, the optimal pairs and then uh, the, it, it goes down to the next level where you, you order the pairs in the, the most efficient way. And then in the end, the end result is the Euler tour. And uh, all edges have to be contained at least once. And uh, the sum has to be minimized because um, every edge has a, a cost associated to it. And in an ideal world, um, it's as simple as going straight to the bottom of the image. Um, um, but in reality, we have uh, quite often a non-ideal graph. So uh, an ideal graph is uh, every node has an ingoing and an outgoing edge or the same number of ingoing and outgoing edges, but quite often this is not the case. And that's why there has to be all those extra steps, including uh, the floyd warshall part. And this is the one I mentioned uh, that is taken care of by the um, uh, time and distance service of uh, Valhalla. And uh, in terms of uh, inputs, so um, yeah, 
you need to define the, the, the start point and end point. Um, they should be inside the area of interest. Um, you can define no-go zones and uh, what's called here the Chinese polygon, uh, that's the area of interest. And then the costing is coming from, because uh, we have different profiles uh, as well, so it's uh, pedestrian, cy cyclist and uh, standard uh, car. And uh, yeah, so all this goes into um, <laughs> Valhalla and uh, uh, it, it, it provides uh, as a result the Chinese postman route. And uh, the route actually comes as a JSON file. So yeah, all you, what we thought would be useful uh, is, is, is shown here, the, the start point, end point, and uh, turn by turn instructions. And uh, uh, then for each maneuver, the time it takes, the distance in kilometers, and the cost, which uh, I don't think it has an actual unit. Uh, yeah. And this can be used, so I think this is uh, uh, quite good. It can be used by the, by the end application in different ways for navigation. This is how it looks like uh, in CADAS for, for one example. So uh, yeah, we, we see, um, as I'll, I'll show later, we still have some uh, issues. Um, it's not always the case that all roads are, are covered. There's still some, some issues what, that, we're, that we're working on. Um, but this is a, um, a good example where the no-go area in the middle was avoided and we, we cover most of those roads. And importantly, a blue line is not just um, yeah, a single pass, but it could be as many as four or five uh, passes. So that's where we said, okay, in reality, actually, uh, it's, it's most likely, the, it's also hard to test this kind of behavior, but uh, it's most likely still the, the most efficient route. But um, if you really wanna cover both sides of a road, uh, you could pass it. Uh, quite a few times in a uh, area that is a bit larger like this one. And then, uh, so we had the, the, the theoretical, uh, the, the algorithm implemented and we, we just realized that, okay, there's a few points. And uh, I was actually in the beginning quite confident. Uh, 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 I um, started uh, uh, exporting uh, one of those uh, routes and I thought let's let's try one of those uh, navigation apps on my phone and I went on the bicycle and uh, after uh, two turns uh, I realized oh it it doesn't really it doesn't really work um, so um, that was my naive uh, uh, understanding and uh, yeah so there's there's different issues where um, you, you see it's a little more complicated if you want to use it in Thanks. Uh, in real life, and one was actually uh, uh, some nodes that you can only reach, let's say uh, in this example, the upper road is a one-way street going inside the uh, polygon, so you can only reach it from the outside, and that's where the first implementation failed, so Ismail Sunni had to do some uh, extra step, and now this is working, so it does an iterative calculation um, to see uh, from which other node this node could be reached uh, best. And then and now we can actually leave the area of interest and re-enter re, re it. And then uh, the idea was of course to the, the use case to use it for navigation and uh, we also realized that yeah, there is there is more work to do. So uh, first of all, um, so that all fits into what I said earlier when I first tried to, to follow the, the standard uh, course, and uh, it just turns out that the standard navigation apps can't deal with multiple passes on the same uh, edge. 
Um, so you need a memory, yeah? you need to get rid of uh, segments, you need to introduce several segments for the same street, so you, you know how many times you've passed it already. You um, turn issues, yeah, you go back, uh, sometimes uh, the edge is used for going in both directions, then uh, uh, GPS uh, gets confused because the geometry is uh, identical. And, uh, and then uh, kind of uh, the, the, the another obvious one, the GPS accuracy. So uh, yeah, you need a very high accuracy. So to know where you are, if you've passed a certain node, otherwise it will keep sending you back to that <laughs> node. So yeah, there's still some, some work to do. And uh, regardless, it's available. We said, uh, label it as a beta version. Uh, put the link of the current pull request, uh, um, which is almost, went, almost went through. Um, and also a link to the um, CADAS uh, routing plugin repository. And we want to thank also the Valhalla community, of course, and uh, Arma Swiss, who uh, sponsored the, this project. All right, that's it, thanks.